Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the blanket crochet cardigan. This is what this girl is wearing today. It is a one piece unit where we're going to be making four different granny squares. Put them together as a large square and then the way that we fold it we create the arms and then the neck piece that goes all the way down to the back and then back up the other side. So it's a really quite an easy pattern to be able to work on and actually it didn't take me long. I did a full sample just to make sure that I understood today's pattern. So let's talk a little bit about what's gonna be happening in today's pattern. So today's pattern has three different sizes, extra small to medium, large to extra large, and three extra large to five extra large. And the instructions for the different kinds of colors I do write on my patterns, I'm sorry about that. And uh, they are all the information that you need in order to get to the size that you want. There's also a crochet diagram available. Thank you to Yarnspirations.com for providing that. For me this makes it a lot easier for me to follow. And we're gonna be making four granny squares. This is the interior. It goes out much further than this. In the instructions it tells you how big to make each square and then you're gonna put them together. So square one, two, three, and four to create like this. Once we get that done we're gonna fold it down and this is the opening at the bottom. So this is the fold at the top and then we're gonna mark it and then sew the edges like this and this is your armholes that happen right here. Then what you're going to do is then you're going to open it up and this whole circle all the way around the bottom is the actual collar and the, the base area of the lapel going all the way down to the back of the cardigan. So it's actually kind of a really quite an easy pattern to do. If you've never done anything like this I would not let this um, pattern fool you to being harder than it really is. So the really the hardest thing is more of the granny squared to getting this beautiful look. I will show you what mine looks like and of course I went outside the box and did different colors and you can too. So at this point my project is actually done. So I actually did this sample and then I did the collar and everything with you on camera but the way that I learn is that I have to do samples first. So what I did is that I did my four just like you see. You will notice that this middle here has texture. I know you cannot see it from that particular point of view but if you look at it from a side point of view it looks like it's raised up a little bit. And then once we get to the granny square that you see like this. It's all just regular granny square work out until you get to the dimension that you need which is listed on the pattern. So really what I would do if I were you and you were me is that do all the middles. There's only four of them so do all the middles. So these little ones here and then come back and then do the next layer on all four and then come and do the next layer on all four and continue that way until you get to what you need to do. So what I did is that I got all four done up into this white area here and then I just did the rest of each square then from here all the way to the edge just like you see. So really the one thing I really liked about this pattern which um, it's, it's helpful to know is that really once you get to bigger granny squares you can get boredom, can really get in there really good but because mine here is extra small to medium it's only 18 inches. So I found myself oh I'm done already. This is awesome. So I'd go to the next one. Oh my goodness I'm done already. So because it's not a large square and because it's broken down into four it doesn't feel like a project that seems like it feels like forever. And because it's broken into four you get four different um, layers or four different squares that look like this and these kind of come out through the sleeve areas on the side uh, that you can see within the model. So let's go back to the diagram and let's talk a little bit about that and then I'll get you started. You'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. So for myself most of you that know me well I love crochet diagrams versus the written words because you can actually see what it looks like here and follow the instructions. So if you're new to crochet diagram reading you'll just start off in the middle and it, you see that it's got chains. Now here's the stitch key. So if you're confused at what anything is here look to the stitch key here and everything is marked as you see and you just follow it in circles. So you just keep on going around. So the reason why it's not showing you the whole square if you're new to crochet diagram reading is that once you get to literally to row number, so I gotta move in there, number nine. Um, once you get there it's just the same thing going all the way around. It's just gonna be bigger and bigger as you go. So it's just a really quite easy thing to do. So what I'm gonna do today is video so I'm gonna get you started and I'm gonna take you here and I'm gonna tell you to finish to the size that's listed on the pattern and then th after that we're gonna come back. We're gonna show you how to do the invisible seam join and then I'll show you how to do the sleeve areas there and then we're gonna show you how to do uh, the, the the ribbing that is the same on both the sleeve and the, the base of the collar area. The only difference is, is that the, the collar area is a lot thicker. So without further ado let's grab our H size 5 millimeter crochet hook today and let's go. 
So let's begin. Just know that if you're going to do your own color scheme just be consistent with your colors. So each one looks the same so in order to keep the balance looking good on your particular project. Start off with the slip knot. Remember that never counts as one. So go one, two. So chain two. And then what I want you to do is insert this needle or this hook sorry into the beginning chain and I want you to single crochet and it's gonna get tight in there but just keep on going. So you're gonna do 16 single crochets into that same one. So you got one and it's gonna be hard to hold at first. Just be patient. So two and three and four five six, seven and eight, nine and ten. Still got six more to go. So if you're running out of space just gotta keep moving stuff around so it all fits. So there was ten in there. So let's do eleven and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15, there's a lot going in there and 16. So you got 16 in there so all you just need to do then is just join it to the top of the beginning single crochet that you had started with. And if you're not sure just you can either count back the number of stitches and go back to the to the 16th or just if you're familiar with it then you can identify it right away. So just uh, slip stitch it to finish and then what I want you to do is that that color is now finished and do the other three that you need to do Okay, so just trim that and just weave in your ends just with the uh, the crochet hook. So just go in and out some of these stitches in order to keep it looking and when I uh, keep it looking good. And then what you're going to do is that um, just leave that on the back end at uh, the back side. Let your tail stay onto the back side so it stays out of your way and then you're good to go. If you weave it in enough times like I have then what you can just do is that you can just trim it and get rid of it immediately and deal with your ends as you go. So do the other three that you need to do for the other three squares and then I will see you back here in just a moment. So let's carry on forward. We're gonna move on to the next color. So we're going to create um, this color here into the project for this round and you'll do all four uh, the same. So go into any one of these single crochets all the way around and it just uh, it's nice to be able just to choose one and what I want you to do is just attach it with the slip stitch and then chain up four. Okay, that counts as a double crochet and chain one. So one, two, three, there's your double crochet and one more is your chain one. So into the next stitch right here, see the straggler? Lay it down on top of it and then just double crochet right over top of it so it gets stuck underneath. So what separates these double crochets is a chain one. So chain one, go to the very next stitch on the round and double crochet. So it helps if you actually grab your stitches. <laughs> there we go and then chain one and then double crochet in the next one like so and keep doing that all the way around for this round. I'll see you at the end. So I'm getting all the way back around and I've just did my final double crochet chain one and then attach it to the third chain up of the first one here. So you need to make sure before you move forward that you can count 16 of these double crochets going all the way around. If you cannot count those you can't move forward because your square will not be in balance. It's important. So you're now gonna fasten that color off. We're going to join another color right after this. So I'm gonna fasten off like I did before and I'll see you back here getting ready for the next color. So let's begin the next color and it's gonna be Heather Black for me or Heather kind of gray. So you can have a circle right now and you want to create an octagonal shape. There will be eight sides on this uh, as we go. Sixteen right now currently is there and we're gonna turn it into eight. So let's begin. You're gonna go into any one of the double crochets. It doesn't matter which one you go into. It's all gonna be equal because you have sixteen there. You're going to attach it with a slip stitch and let's begin. So the first one that we're gonna do is gonna be a corner of the octagon. One of the corners at least. And so you're gonna chain two. That counts as a half double crochet this time and then you're gonna chain three which is your corner. So one, two and three. So that was a total of five. You're gonna come back into the same one and you're going to half double crochet and there is your new corner like that. So what separates the corners is going to be three stitches of half double crochet. The first one is in the chain one space. So one, okay. The next one is into the double crochet for two 
and then third one is in the chain one space for three. And then we're gonna do another corner. So the corners every time you hit them is going to be one double half double crochet, chain three and one half double crochet. So let's just review this one more time. So moving along there's gonna be three half double crochets by themselves. The first one is in the chain one space. The next one is in the next double crochet and the next one's in the chain one space. And then you have another corner. So the corner is right in the double crochet. So half double crochet, chain three and half double crochet. So please do that same idea going all the way around. So I'm moving forward and I'm coming all the way back around and I'm just almost there and this is gonna be the last corner that I'm gonna form. Chain three and half double crochet back into the same one and if you've done your math right the final last three stitches will be the half double crochet. So one's in the chain one space as before, one's in the uh, next double crochet and the final one is in the last chain one space and then you just join it to the second chain up to create that to keep that corner consistent. So therefore you have an eight sided project that looks like this at this moment and you're gonna fasten off this color just like I had before and we're gonna begin something new after this. So let's start our next color. I'm gonna start off with a slip knot. It's just extra security for me in order for me not to be paranoid. Things don't fall out. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna start in any one of the chain three spaces. It doesn't matter which one you start on and just go into one of them and just attach it with a slip stitch. Now you're going to chain one and one single crochet into the same one and we wanna keep this corner looking consistent. So just if you have to move it in order to keep it to one side then do so. And what you have to do in order to keep this consistent is that you chain one and then you come back into the same chain space and single crochet again. So each one of these on the corners will be one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. To begin the next one that we have to do is that there's always gonna be five stitches in between these corners. So one, two, three, four and five. So we're gonna make those all together as one. But before we can do that we have to get to the center point on the top where the invisible space is. See my finger right here? We're going to get up there. So in order to get there we have to chain three first. So one, two, three. So we wanna do five together double crochets as we uh, pick those all up. So we're just going to wrap our hook and come into the very first one and we want to collect five of them in a row. So just wrap and pull through and pull through two and hold. Then do the next. Wrap and into the next one. Pull through, pull through two and hold. And then wrap and through, pull through, pull through two and hold. And keep on doing that until you get a total of five of those and there will be a total of six loops if you include that first chain when you go to do so. And you're gonna collect all five of them that are sitting there like that. Okay? I'll show this to again, again as we go around. So we're just gonna pull through all of these stitches now and I want you to chain three. So one, two, three and go to the next chain three space here. So single crochet, chain one and single crochet. All into that right there. Now we're gonna do another one just like here. So we chain three first. So one, two and three and then we start collecting them. So five together. So we're gonna go in and we're just gonna keep on going nice and steady pace. No need to rush. And you're gonna collect these. Like so. So you have six loops now on the hook. Pull through all of them and then chain three, one, two, three and then go to the next chain three space. So single crochet, chain one and single crochet and I'll show you it to you one more time. So chain three to begin. So one, two, three, collect the next five with five together. You're gonna do this all the way around for this particular one. There's really nothing hard about this particular granny square. There's just, it's not um, just like a simple granny square though. So you have six loops on the hook so it means that done. Pull through, one, two, three, go to the next chain three space, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Please do that all the way around for this round. When you get all the way back around you're just going to do that last section here, chain three, one, 
two, three. You've already done this first one so you just got a slip stitch to the first single crochet that you started with and then fasten off this color just like you had before. It's gonna look like it's buckling at this point and this is what's creating that three dimensional layer look uh, when you're done. So if it's looking like it's buckled to you do not panic. It's part of the pattern and you'll see that it will settle down really quickly as well. So fasten this off and let's start on with our next color. So let's begin our next color. So we're going to start off with the yarn on the hook. So here's the thing. The next color will go right into this space not to this stitch here. Okay? So no matter where you are here it will not go into this chain one space. That's more of a filler. It'll go right into here. Okay? So when we go to start choose any one of those and go right into here not here. Okay? So gotta go the two rows back and I want you to join it with a slip stitch and I want you then to chain four. So one, two, three and four. Going into the exact same space where I just showed you. Okay, so it's down here and see these white layers. Okay, these uh, sorry these um, um, mauve. What I want you to do is try to focus on making sure that you kind of have those separated from each other as you go. So we want to do a total of five trebles in each one. The chaining four counts as one of them in the very beginning and going into the same space and I want you to treble. So make sure you wrap that hook twice in order to treble and you're looking for the secret number of five. The more you get in these will separate and these look like they're part of the, the characteristics of it. So if you bury them underneath this it doesn't look as sharp as if you separate them as you're doing it and now's the time to do it. Okay? So you want a total of five of them which includes that chain four that we started with. Okay, so you see that there. So now what you're just gonna do is go to the top of this cluster. You'll see it right there. See where they're all coming together and I want you just to single crochet into that spot. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So the next one is in this chain three space right here. Separate those moves when you begin to do it. So just gonna do five trebles. Okay, it's more of a visual thing when you separate those things out. And once you honestly get used to this pattern it happens naturally anyway. But I really want you to be conscientious of it first so that you know that what you're looking for. And you're gonna do five trebles into that same spot. So you can see you're covering over part of that last layer which gives it a really unique look. Right? So then once you get your five done go to the top of the next cluster here and single crochet in. So please do that all the way around. So then you're going to go into here for five trebles, single crochet the top and then continue all, all the way around. So please do that. Now I'm coming up all the way to the end. I have this tendency that I wanna keep on going because I see all this space. I did it when I was doing the sample as well. This remember is the, the five that are in there. You have to join this single crochet to the top of the beginning um, four, uh, chain four that you started with. Okay, so it pulls it over just like that. You're gonna notice it's still buckling. Again, do not panic about that. It's all part of it. These things are gonna pop out of the work as you're going. So I want you to uh, fasten that off and I want you to bring on the next color and we're gonna continue and we're gonna uh, translate to a square in the next revolution. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So this is when we finally start going into a square. Let's just start off with our next color and start off with a slip knot. So what we have to look for is that there's five uh, trebles into each one of these corners. Okay? And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna convert one of these into a corner. The other one stays a flat edge and the next one is a corner. So the way that we're gonna start off with is that we're gonna start off on a flat edge then go to our first corner. So we're not gonna start off the corner right away. You wanna pay attention to these three. Okay, so one, two and three heading towards uh, the area that you're going to crochet into. You're going to attach to the top one. So the middle one of the five and then you're gonna move forward with it. So you're just gonna attach it with a slip stitch and then one single crochet in, uh, sorry chain one and then one single crochet into the same one. So you're going to do the next two of that. So there's gonna be a total of three. Okay, so the next two which are, are in the trebles like that and then what you want to do is that you want to single crochet into the middle one here. Okay, so that's four and then the next three until you get to the middle one of this group of five is where you single crochet to. And I tell you things like that instead of counting if you can see visual it's a lot easier. Okay, so you did three of the trebles here. You did one in the middle and then three of the trebles here and then that's it. 
So right down here is where we're gonna play. So we're gonna jump right back down into this section right here and what we're going to do is we're gonna start off with um, four uh, crochet stitches but they're not all the same. The first two because the distance is so far is gonna be a treble. So we're just gonna do two trebles in a row. So one and two and because the distance is getting closer we're going to do two doubles in a row. So double crochet like this. So two trebles, two doubles. So the corners from this point forward will always be the same uh, chain count. It will always be three. So one, two, three. So now we're gonna do the other side of the corner so we can turn the corner. So it will be opposite to what you see. So it's two double crochet and then two trebles. So let's do that. In the same spot two doubles, one and two and then two trebles like that. Okay, so you got two trebles. So now we're gonna move along a flat edge just like we had been here. So one of our corners is done. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go right to the middle one first. Okay, so jump all that, go right to the middle and single crochet. So you do that one plus two more of its friends with the trebles. Okay, just like you had on the other side. You're gonna do the middle and then you'll do the next three which takes you to the middle treble of the group of five. So one, two and three. So let's do another corner just to make sure you got it. The first two right here are going to be two trebles. So one and two. The next two are doubles. So two double crochets next because it's getting closer to the corner. And then to turn the corner it will always be chain three. So one, two, three and then we start off opposite. So it's gonna be two doubles first like so and then two trebles to, to keep on moving around that corner. Okay, so then where do you join? The middle one of the next group of five. And then you'll do that one plus two more. So that gives you three plus the middle and then the next three and then you'll do another corner like so. So from a distance you can see that these are starting to pucker outward like flowers. Really quite nice and then you'll see that you'll convert into a square after you're done this. So please continue to do this round. So when you finish that final corner the final join is right in the first single crochet. So you jump all that like you had been before if it's any other uh, um, corner. So there you go. So what I want you to do is that I want you to fasten that off. We have our a beautiful square and now we're gonna do one more layer of just double crochets going around and then we're gonna start with the granny square look after that. We're almost done this hard part of this and then the rest of it is kind of mindless. So let's continue with the next round. Fasten that off. Bring your next color up. So let's begin our next color. This is gonna be a regular a solid granny square look going all the way around. Right where you fastened off is right where you want to join the first one here. Okay, so it's the very first single crochet so it's right there and we're going to join on this yarn. And we're gonna chain three. So slip stitch at first to join and then chain three. And that's your first double crochet. So every stitch across is going to be one double crochet and then in the corners what you're going to do is that you're gonna apply three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Just like that. Okay, so you're gonna continue to go all the way uh, to the first corner. Just checking my work as I go here. And I chose this uh, accenting color to be really quite dominant but you know what your color schemes are up to you. You can follow exactly what the designers have uh, placed for you if you wish. If that you're ever concerned that your creativity may be in question. Again you only live once you might as well try everything once. So let's uh, continue. So you're gonna go right to the edge. Okay. So right to the corner and the next corner is gonna be three double crochet. So one, two and three and then to turn the corner remember it's like before it's always gonna be chain three. So one, two, three and then coming back in. Okay, so the, and then you'll put in three double crochets again into that uh, same corner and then you'll just move along to your next ones as you go and so double crochet yourself all the way to the next corner. So please do that all the way around and you'll see that it will turn out pretty great. So I'm coming all the way back around. This was my final corner and then I'm just gonna double crochet myself all the way back to where I had started. 
Okay, so I didn't start off in a corner this time but all the rest of now all the rounds will always start off in a corner to make it a lot easier for you. So you're just gonna go into the very last stitch which is where I am currently now and I'm just going to join it to the top of the beginning chain three like that. Okay, so if you're ever in question remember that we started off in the first single crochet and so then I was working in the trebles at that point. So we're gonna fasten off this color and we're going to begin establishing the next row to be the granny square row and our round sorry and then what's gonna happen is that all the rest then will follow suit after that. So I just gotta show you one more round um, to get you to transition over and then just recap on what to do from that point on if you don't know how to do granny squares from this point. So let's uh, carry on and I'll see you here in just a moment. So now we're gonna transition ourselves into a granny square but we gotta get ourselves into a granny square kind of idea first. So it's like the traditional look. We're gonna start off with a slip knot. We're gonna start off in a corner and the corners always are going to start the same way. They're always gonna be chaining six. So go right into a corner, slip stitch to fasten and then chain six. So one, two, three, that's one double crochet and four, five, six, that's your chain three to separate your corners. So you're gonna come in and finish the corner on the other side. So when you come back around you have to finish this corner as well. So you're just gonna put in three double crochets. So that'll happen the same like it did before. So always in the corners will be three double crochets. Now when you go to start you're gonna skip the first two double crochets. You're gonna go to the third and you're gonna place in, sorry you're gonna chain one, sorry first. Let's let me restart. You're going to chain one first, skip two stitches, one and two and go to the third for double crochet and you're gonna put three double crochets into there. So we're establishing those spacing of a traditional granny square. You only skip two the very first time out of from a corner. The rest of it you're gonna skip, skip over three. So to begin the next one chain one, skip three, one, two and three, go to the fourth and double crochet three times. Okay, so just remember when you start off from the corner the first one is only ever gonna be skipping two. The rest of it is always skipping three. So chain one and skip three. So one, two, three, go to the fourth, three more double crochets there. Like so. Chain one, skip three, one, two and three, go to the fourth. like so and then chain one and then continue. So skip three, so one, two and three go to the fourth and if you've done it right when you go to look at this after I've got my three in here there should only be two stitches in your way before you see another corner. So chain one and see one and two. It's just like you skipped over two in the very beginning. So come and do that corner. So it's always gonna be chain, or sorry three double crochets. So one, two, and three and then chain three and then again another three. So one, two and three and begin again. So chain one. So skip two, one and two, go to the third. Okay, three double crochet and I want you to do that same idea going all the way around. It's a very easy round. So chain one and now that you've done the first one you have to skip three. So one, two and three go to the fourth and double crochet three times. Please do that all the way around and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Now when you get all the way back around you only completed one of the double crochets of the three that you need. So when you go into the final corner, so chain one first, in the final corner you're only gonna put in two double crochets. So one and two and you're going to join it to the top of the third one. So one, two and three. Okay to keep that gapping space looking good. So now you're just gonna fasten off that color and you're going to bring back. So what you wanna do now is you wanna get yourself into a pattern of color. So what I did for myself is that I went from white, our cream to like mauve to like a, a purple to like the heather. So I just continued to do those as I go and what I did for myself is that once I uh, got to this point I did the I did the entire square now I finished it. So I just didn't stop and do every round of the same one um, in order to get them all to the, the size. So what we, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you just a recap on how to do a regular traditional granny now and then when I'm gonna leave the rest for you and then we're gonna come back later and I'm gonna show you how to join and do all that jazz stuff after. So let's uh, continue along and let's grab your next color and let's begin. So let's grab our next color. It's gonna be a traditional granny square now moving forward creating a slip knot 
and coming into the first corner. So attach it, okay, and remember it's always gonna be the same. You're gonna chain six which is a double crochet plus chain three. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and then coming back in now to do the other side of the corner. So there's always gonna be three double crochets. So one, two, and three. So it's a traditional granny square at this point. So you're gonna chain one and jump to the next chain one space and put in three double crochets. So because you're doing it this way the square will get constantly bigger as you go. So let's uh, talk about the sizes as we go. So in the uh, extra small to medium you need a total of 18 inches to be your square size. So you'll have to measure out 18 inches once you get there. I would recommend you do one and use that as your template to make sure that the rest will match. And then if you're doing the um, large to I think two extra large then it will be a, a 19 inch um, square and then you're doing three extra large to um, five extra large you'll want to do a 20 inch square. So it's adjusting towards the sizes that are available on the pattern. If you like to um, be able to consider um, changing the sizes at all if you take those numbers because there's uh, four squares that are sewn together so it's if this one is 18 inch and you do another one that's 36 inches. So you can actually kind of uh, wing things if you have to and then uh, just kind of fold things over your body if you want to customize the shaping for you in order if you want to change it with something different. So it's actually quite a, an easy pattern. You just gotta you know be a little bit of a, uh, a creative person. So chain one and then you're gonna hit the first corner here and it's gonna be three double crochet just like so. Three chain and three double crochet. So for me it's mindless at this point. I've, I know how to crochet. I've been doing granny squares all my life I guess. And so then now I can just watch TV easily and being able to continue. So you're just gonna go all the way around with that. Each space gets uh, three double crochets. You separate those with chain ones, corners, three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. And now you're just gonna continue. So just go and look at the pattern, get to the size that you need and then once you get that size and make sure all four squares are done and then we're gonna sew them together here on camera with you. I'll show you the invisible seam and then we're gonna carry forward from this point in the project. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So welcome back. I now have my squares all done. I have all four done and I'm ready to do the assembly period. So what I would suggest to you before you move on from this go through your square and make sure that you take out all the loose ends as far as the tails out so that you have a nice clean palette to be able to work with. You'll thank yourself later for just going through the process. It took me about 15 minutes just to make sure I got everything and it's all ready to go. So make sure you get all four done and get rid of your loose ends and let's move on to doing the assembly. So what we're gonna be doing at this moment is that we're gonna start the assembly period. So you have four squares. So what I would recommend is that you sew with an invisible seam and I'll show how to do that. An invisible seam here to bring those two together, okay. And then I would do this one on this side, okay. And that's kind of what I've done off camera. And then what I would do is that you're gonna have two long panels then is this whip stitch or sorry do your, um, uh, your invisible seam with your whip stitch all the way down the, the middle just like so. So all four will be together. Make sure when you're going to do this is that the right side or the good side is facing up so that you can do that invisible seam just perfectly. Then what you're going to do from that point is that you're going to take the square and fold it in half so that the fold is on the top. The arms of the model are coming out right here. You see the armhole and armhole. So what we have to do is that there's a measurement that we need to sew down onto. So we need to sew from here all the way here leaving the opening right here. Okay. So let's uh, take a little bit of a closer look at the main model photo because I want to show you something. So when you're looking at the model's point of view is that you're gonna see that there's a big ribbing a section right here and this is done after everything has been put together. So when you go and look at the other one that we had just uh, looked at here when you go to put everything together you're gonna have an opening right here. This is where the bo uh, model's body is sitting inside of. So this would be the neck area up here and then this uh, uh, deeper part would be than the lower back and so then the arms are going up there. So it's just the way that it's sewn it gives it the shape of looking like the model 
just like you see up here. So it's actually a quite an easy thing to do. So without further ado, let me show you how to do an invisible seam and then what I want you to do is that I want you to put all four squares together and then I want you to fold it in half just like it shows here and I want you to sew up both sides and then when we come back after that I'm gonna show you how to go around this to make that beautiful um, cuffing that you see that she's wearing around the top of her neck. So I have two seams here that need to be put together you can see here and the front sides or the good sides or the right sides are facing up towards me. So this is what you're gonna look at if you were to look at the model. This is the side. So the other side would be what is inside the uh, the model. Okay so it's the inside of it. So what you can do for an invisible seam and unfortunately I've used black yarn because I, I wanted to be strategic about it but uh, for color wise. But what you want to do is use the same color of yarn that you've done an attaching with. And what I want to do is that if you focus there's always two strands that, that are on a stitch. Now the front strand is called the front loop and the back strand is called the back loop. If you use only the back loop and go all the way down and then you use the back loop of this one, okay, so the back loop of that one and go all the way down, you have an invisible seam that is literally flat. So you will never see any kind of ridges where you've done any kind of sewing. So there's three stitches on the corner if you remember. So going only into the back loop, what I want you to do is with the piece of string, I want you to create a slip knot on this side. So go into the back loop of the middle one of the three and then go into the back loop on the other side of the middle one of the three and go through. If you go through both loops you are going to have a ridge and it will be very obvious when you're wearing this. So once you get it all the way down just insert the needle through that loop and pull. That ties it on top onto each other and you're left with a little bit of a tail and you're gonna secure that in. So coming back to this side, go to the next stitch down, go in the back loop only and then on the other side go in the next stitch down in the back loop only and just go straight across. This is called the whip stitch. So you're going to match these as you go. So if you can for, for example see how the blacks are kind of opposite to each other. If they start doing this you know that your stitching is off. So what you wanna do is pay attention to making sure that you're going into the right stitches when you're going across from each other. And if you can, if you're going off in any way, for example say you're starting to um, getting a little bit of helter skelter going on, you can always adjust and just apply and skip a stitch in order to pull everything back together. It really will not be uh, visible as long as you don't have to do it too many times I guess. So you're just gonna go across and all the way down your um, your seam right to the end. Make sure that you have enough yarn in order to go all the way to, the, to, do, to do that seam. So when you get to the spaces, okay don't go around a space, go just into the chain. Again the back loop only and continue that on the other side. So everything just matches each other as you go. So this loose end that I've been covering up as I've been going along, as soon as you get it in long enough, you can just safely trim that out and you don't ever see your loose end. So you're just gonna go all the way down the project. So the last one was just in the chain. So this one here is a double crochet. I'm going into the, to the back loop of that one. Back loop of double crochet and keeping everything in balance. So this is how you're gonna want to be able to put your uh, sides together. Uh, when you're going to put everything together and then after this point you're going to want to fold this in half and sew up where the armholes um, are going to appear on it and using that uh, diagram in the pattern you can get those measurements on how far you need to go up from the base of that when you go to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this with you and at the end just fasten off um, with your with your needle so that you can stay in balance and keep everything together as you're going all the way down. Okay so get that done and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So all my seams are now done, all four squares are together. So with the wrong sides facing each other, so I have the good side facing up so I can access those back loops. This is the fold area up here and down here is where it's gonna stay open. So what I want to do from the top and this is for all sizes is that you're going to measure eight inches down from the top. So let's just do that now. One, two, right about there. Let me just do that again. Okay, so it's right about there. So what you want to do is that you kind of want to mark that with your um, with the stitch marker in order to secure that. 
And what I would do is just grab both sides and just count the number of spaces that you have to make sure that it is the right one on both sides. Nothing's worse than getting this far and you realize then you might be off. So let me just check. So I'm just going across from each other. So I'm gonna count down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that's where it is. So I'm just gonna put a stitch marker in there for now and that'll hold it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the other side and then using the same principle that I did before, just put them together and then use the back loops only to secure these and put the, sew the rest of it all the way down to the base here leaving the bottom open. So the top should be folded shut and this should be where we're gonna go. Please do the other side of that and then just whip stitch along the base. So starting from the stitch marker that I've already labeled and I've already um, stitch markered the other side. I haven't sewn the other side. I'm gonna do that off camera. But I wanna start at the stitch marker and work my way down to the base. Okay, so that's what my uh, theory is today. <laughs> it's not really a theory, that just makes sense. So again, going in the back loops only. So go in the back loop of the one side and going in the back loop of the other side at the exact same point. Use that stitch marker to kind of just help you out a little bit and then it just pull it through. Using a slip knot on the other side, just whip it, uh, just put it on through and therefore it'll lock that into position. Now using that straggler what you wanna do is just lay it down on top and then just keep on going like I showed you before back loops to back loops like so and you'll have a perfect invisible seam and what I would do is get rid of that stitch marker now. You've already got it secured and then you can go all the way down. So please do that um, to this side and the other side and then we're gonna start the edging after that. So let's talk about her cuff and also the neck ridging. So they're two separate units. So where you've done that fold along the side where the opening is, this is where one of the cuffs is gonna go. Okay, it's gonna go around this edge here and it's gonna change depending on your size I guess that you're working on. The other uh, part of the other section will go along the base. Now that you've sewn everything together along the sides, this is a complete circle all the way around the base. So what I want to cover first is that we're, let's just talk about the cuff area. So in the cuff what we're going to do is that it's the same for all sizes here and it's 56 single crochets all the way evenly around. So you're gonna take the cuff and you're gonna take the main color and you're just gonna single crochet in a circle around the cuff 56 single crochet. So it's gotta be an even number in order to work because this is a ribbing kind of effect. So then what you're gonna do that from that point is that you're gonna have a four more rounds then of being able to finish this cuff. Now the ribbing and the, uh, the section where her neck is is actually the base of the opening. So again you're gonna go and chain all the way around. Now it's gonna change depending on the size of the square that you used uh, depending on your project. So it could be 256, 266 or 280. Again single crochet all the way around and again you're just gonna pick up and it's one double crochet around each and then you're going to then start the ribbing effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you what it looks like on the cuff and then you can apply the same thing to the other cuff and also just follow here on the ribbing and I'll show you how, I'll show you on the cuff exactly what we need to do. So let's begin and I'm gonna use the main color purple and what you want to do is start off at the seam line of where it's been joined here and this is the top uh, section up here. Okay, so I'm gonna sh do it where I did the sew all the way down. So I'm just gonna go right at the base and I'm going to attach it with a slip stitch and what I want to do is that I want to go all the way around this Okay, so I'm gonna attach it, chain one in one single crochet in and I'm gonna go all the way around and I'm gonna count so that I get 56 of these single crochets all the way around. So in the gap space, go right in the gap space and then in the tops of the double crochets just go right into each one of the stitches as you go and make sure that you count out 56 as you go around because that'll make a difference because you're gonna go to the other side, make sure you get your 56 so that they both look even. If you just start guessing, you may have one sleep bigger than the other. So single crochet all the way around this, okay, and come back and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I just went around the armhole just like so. There is 56 and I'm just going to join it to the beginning single crochet. So that gets that all the way around making sure that I do have my 56 so that I can continue to go. So let's go for round number two. 
So round number two, very straightforward. We're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and I want to put one double crochet in each one of the single crochets going all the way around and this is setting up for the ribbing for the next round after that. So it's one double crochet in each going all the way around. So once you get all the way back around just join it to the top of the beginning chain three. So this is what it looks like. So I was looking ahead. So what happens on these cuffs is that there's four rows. So the single crochet, this row and then two more you're done. You do both cuffs like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing very similar to it on the base of it. The difference is that the base we're gonna go and we're gonna do the ribbing and so that it's six inches wide when it comes out so we don't just stop at four rounds as we go. That's what the major difference is between the two. So let's move on to round number three where we're gonna establish doing some ribs. So we're going to now establish doing some ribs. We're gonna chain two which doesn't count as anything. It's more of a builder and we're gonna start off and we're gonna do double crochet in the front post. So just look straight on down and you're gonna go uh, wrap the hook and go in through the side of the post and out the other side and pull through and then pull through two and two. That's a front post double crochet. Then you go to the next one. That's a back post. So you wrap it, you come in from the back, go forward and back out, pull through and then finish it off as normal. The next one is a front post double crochet. So you just go in through the front and then the back posts go in from the back. And you're gonna continue to do that same thing opposite to each other all the way around for round number three. And then we just have one more round to do on the cuffs and then we just move on to the base area. So continue to do that all the way around. So as you get all the way back around the last one is a back post double crochet because the first one was the front post. So that means that we're done right and then we're just gonna join to the top of the beginning. So in row, round number four, we're going to maintain exactly what is already there. So if it's in the front post now, it's gonna stay in the front post after that. So chain two, if it's a front post, make it a front post still again and that continues the ribs. And you're gonna do that in the base section as well when you get, when you get ready to do the whole main going all the way around. So this is kind of how you maintain the ribs this is the kind of look that you see that is behind the model's neck as she's sitting in the chair and you can see that the ribs are just gonna carry forward like that. So this is the final round for this cuff. You're gonna do the other cuff and then I'm gonna leave you to do the base. The base again you're just gonna trace it with single crochet. Do exactly what you see that you're doing here with the cuffs. The only difference is that you're going to make these six inches so that it's gonna be a massive uh, section coming out in order to create that really great look that is behind her neck. So I'm gonna leave the rest for you in order to do this uh, one and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep working on this off camera and then I'll come back at the end and I'll show you my example of my work. <music>